the audios of the whole event as soon as James fixes us up with them. So, let's just move right into this. Let's expose some of this trash, this junk, this lies, this hype that's spoken about copywriting. Because I'm telling you now, a lot of the stuff that's around now will actually destroy your copyright business. It will. And the reason is what I said before about the continued studying. Some people say to you, well, I've got 387,000 books on copywriting on my shelf. So what? Can you read them all? No, you can't read them all. But why is King Solomon was right in the book of Ecclesiastes? He says, to the reading of many books, there is no end. How many books can you read? Do you want to sit in a library and go through book after book after book after book? Do you want to get the next DVD, the next CD, the next... How far can you go with this stuff? You don't need all that. You just need a handful of books. I have a couple of books that I read continually, copywriting books, and I'll show you them later. But as far as uh, millions of copywriting books, I don't buy anything to do with copywriting. And you'll find out over the weekend the kind of stuff I read to become a copywriter. Listen to the experts only. I don't believe it. Because how does an expert, James, you specialize in one field, and that expert specializes in a certain kind of copy or a set of marketing for that field. How does he know exactly what you're doing? How does he know exactly the mindset of James's customers? How does he know that he doesn't? So what an expert could tell you about an application for this kind of information in your business could be completely wrong. And how many times over the years have we seen experts are wrong? So the experts sometimes are right, but a lot of times they're wrong as well. It has to be done this way. Me and Raja, we were talking about, there's a lot of talk about the 14 elements of the sales letter. The 14, you know, what we're building here, a house. H hands up anyone in this room who can have a conversation. Hands up anyone in this room who can have an interesting conversation. Janine didn't put your hand up, Janine. <laughs> if you can have an interesting conversation, you can write copy. It's as simple as that. It doesn't have to be done a certain way. You have to communicate. Communicate one-on-one. -on -one. At, at a very personal level, that is how it works. A lot of it is just a lot of junk. It really is. Because they tell you when you learn all those skills, you'll be able to print your own money. And unfortunately, I meet so many young copywriters, new copywriters, people who want to learn copywriting, they never make a penny because they're too busy, sat on the backside, reading the latest manual. And that, that's a problem. That is a big problem. I'm just showing uh, Steve for last night some of the stuff I'm reading at the moment. And you thought, what on earth? In fact, I'll show you one now. <coughs> Might be at the back. Right, we're talking about copyright, and that's what I, one of the books I'm reading at the moment. Advertising muscle cars from the 50s. Oh, no, this is the 60s, this one. He said, well, why are you reading that? I said, well, it's just packed with ideas. Just packed with ideas. Because in those days, that was like macho days. And everybody wanted a big car with big wheels and all this stuff. So really, what they were doing was tapping into the psyche of the person who wanted to buy the car. But what do a lot of copywriters do? They're reading copywriting books. How do you find out about bullets? How do you find out about headlines? I'll tell you how you find out. You copy writing. You copy the old stuff. That's what copywriting is. You copy the old stuff and tailor and tweak it to suit yourself. So you don't need to know all this technicalities. But we're going to go through a lot of them anyway. So if you read more, and you study more, and you research more, you find out more, you listen more, you buy more. It just leads to this, suspended desistance. Does anybody know what that means? <laughs> right, well, write it down now on your book, suspended desistance. And what you can do is you can jump online, find a, um, go to Webster's Dictionary or something, and find out what suspended desistance is. Because that is what happens when you continually read and read and read. It stops you. Stops you dead in the tracks. 